George. Boss, I'm telling you the truth. If me and Clyde had a place to do this here right, why, we'd be plumb fool for selling you this hill. Now, don't go galloping too fast too soon, Mr. Barlow. Me and Joe just ain't made up our minds yet, that's all. Like I just said, you Cartwrights that have the market corner, getting top dollar for hardly any work at all. Well, you fellas sure make it sound easy enough. I just don't know if Austin and I are ready for an operation like this, son. Well, little Joe, I told you I was going to give you the instructions and all the path fare you needed. Well, what do y'all say? Excuse us, Mr. Sure. Y'all go right ahead and think it over. I just don't see how we can go wrong with it. Well, I won't find nothing wrong with it, except maybe a few growls from Paul, but... Oh, no, I don't think so. Not when he finds out the kind of profit we're going to be making. Yeah, but, Joe, that's a lot of money. It's a lot of money, but you got to think big nowadays. $50 for two? All right, for two, but we're not talking about any run-of-the-mill thing. We're talking about two genuine Gerby Royals. They're not a dime a dozen. You're right. Looks like you and me made a sale, Clyde. I think we could have got more money out of them. You know, I believe you were right. I'm willing to take blame for you, are All right, gentlemen. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Thank 50 you. dollars. You boys really made an excellent deal. I mean, y'all really made an excellent deal. Yep. And uh, don't forget about the instructions you're supposed to give us. Oh, yeah. I darn near forgot them. Uh, of course, Barlow was talking for himself when he implied that the instructions came free. Implied nothing. He said for sure they went with a deal. All right, forget the deal. Give me the fifty dollars no, back. Go Come on, right. give us our money back. Hold it, hold it, boys. Right. I did mention the instructions in the deal. Now, you want to give it to him? But give but, it to him. Like I said, a deal's a deal. Thank you, Joe. We better hit the on the ropes. Come on. Ah, uh, boys, just a minute. You know how plumb them forgot about them carrying cages. Uh, you know, I didn't mention them in the deal, but uh, you boys can, uh, can buy them from it or rent it from it. A reasonable price, you know. It, uh, well, like I said, you know, if it means we know you boys. I, I want to kind of help you all get some started in business. I expect we can lend them to you. I expect. Come on, Joe. Let's go. Tell me something. Where'd you dig up a name like Gerby Royals? Well, them boys give me $50 for a pair of rabbits. I figure I ought to give them a fancy name. <laughs> That's right. Well, all we have to do now is just sit back and wait. That's right, Clyde. Like I said, you stick before Barlow, and we'll be wearing nothing but pure diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> Slow and easy like. What's the matter? I mean, I don't think we ought to tell Paul right off. I think we ought to kind of sneak up on him like we left he's had dinner and got a full stomach, you know. Yeah, I think maybe you're right. Hey, you know, you read Paul pretty good, Hoss. Yeah, well, it ain't easy. It took a long, long time. Hey, here. Hi, Paul. Uh huh? 
Hey, uh, yeah, have, have a good dinner? <laughs> Not yet, but <laughs> looks like I'm gonna have one. Uh, no, Paul, the, these rabbits ain't eating rabbits. Uh, me and Joe are on the ground floor of a really big money-making enterprise, Paul. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, we're, uh, we're in a, we're in a rabbit-raising business. Oh, well, then I know I'm gonna have plenty of rabbit stew around. No, Paul, like I say, these ain't eating rabbits. We, we, we ran into your friend, you know, Clyde and Barlow. Two real nice fellas, and, and well, they, they sold us on the idea of raising rabbits for fur coats at two dollars a skin. Clyde and Barlow got you uh, started on this. I know we just got two little measly rabbits now, but you see, when Nelly here... No, no, no. Uh, it's Buck. I, I got Nelly over here. Oh, yeah? Well, anyhow, we put Nelly and... Well, we get Nelly... We put Nelly and, and Buck together, and then in four months, Nelly's gonna have how many rabbits? Well, well, uh, Nelly's good for probably, uh, oh, ten rabbits. Then you divide, because they're not all the same. Then you have five times the divisional uh, adjustment jo you've made jo Joseph. with an overhead. Joseph, jo Joseph. But, yeah. You don't have to tell me how rabbits multiply. Oh, yeah, two dollars a head, too, Paul. Two dollars a head. Hmm. Well, the, uh... Top grade rabbits? Oh, 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 are they top grade? <laughs> Paul, do you know anything about rabbits? Anything at all? Mm, not what I know, Jacks and Cottontail. Well, well, let me instruct you in the quality of rabbits. These rabbits, well, feel them. Just feel it. Feel his fur. Go ahead. Ain't that something? Mm -hmm. These rabbits, Paul, are genuine Gerby Royals. They ain't a half a dozen of them in the country, right, Joe? Right. Pa, we are gonna put a fur skin, a fur coat, a whole coat, on the back of every woman in America. Every woman in America. You're gonna be the rabbit kings of America. Well, I wish you a lot of luck in your uh, rabbit enterprise. Thanks, Paul. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> See you at dinner. We've been sitting here every night for a week now. Well, according to the instructions, she's sure enough to you. Hey, maybe we're, we're making her nervous by just watching her. Okay. Well, I don't know. You know what they say. You, you can't make water boil by watching it. They say that. I think I'm going to go to bed. You coming? No. I think I'll stay here and keep Nellie company a little longer. Hmm. Good night. Good night, Joe. Good night, Nellie. Come on, Nellie. Be motherly. Hey, Joe, wake up. Wake up. They're here, Joe. Joe, wake up. Wake up. They've arrived. They're here. Uh, I'll say hello to them. Yes, Joe, our... Joe, Joe. Come on. Our investment has now multiplied. Wake up. Multiply. How, ma how, how many? Well, I didn't get a good count, but come on. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, well, I hope she gave us a good count. <laughs> oh, look at them little girls. Look at those little Kirby Royals. Nelly, you all right? Mm-hmm. Now, let me see. We uh, one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. Eight little Kirby Royals. Beautiful. Now, let me see. Suppose then. Suppose then. Suppose what? Well, now, now suppose we got we got eight, we got eight Kirby Royals. Yeah. So, now suppose we got four males and four females. Four males and four females. The way I figure it, before very long, we should have ourselves fifty. Fifty Gerby Royals at two dollars a piece. Oh boy, hey that... Joe, you know that's that's like an explosion, ain't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, like a so like a rabbit explosion. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Hey, wait a minute, Joe. What happens if them four he rabbits turns out to be she rabbits? Or the four she rabbits turns out to be he rabbits, and are she or he rabbits? All of them are he rabbits, or all of them are she rabbits. What happens then? 
You figure it out, I'm on the bed. Young roping horse, he works real good, don't he, Ben? Not bad, mate. Not bad. Moves like a big cat. Yeah, seems sound. Moves good. Well? Well, fact is, mate, I never been much at buying younger, untried, cutting and roping horses. 150's mighty low for an animal like this. 150. Well, I'll have to think about it, mate. I can't promise you won't be sold while you're making up your mind. I'll take that chance. I hear that Horse and Little Joe are doing real proud with the rabbit raisin over the Ponderosa. Yeah, real, real proud. They got more Gerby Royal rabbits hippity hoppity all over that place. Gerby what rabbits? Gerby Royals. Never heard of that breed. Yeah, they're real productive. <laughs> Some, where, where'd you get those? In kitchen, where not be long. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, we'll, we'll take better care of them next time. Poor management. Soon you lose business. All right, the management will get better. We're going to get more cages. It's going to be all right. Just yeah, don't... George, you sign it. You know, have longer. Yeah, oh, you, stop you, tell me tell you, about... you, you, you speak English. Tell you, George. Uh, let's get back in the barn. Yeah, I got four more of them. Good. Is this all cut out? No, there's more of them. Let's get these in the cage yeah. and get the others before Pa starts complaining again. How many would you say are still out? Yeah, let me see. Now we got four, six. That makes eight left. Yeah. Oh, good, good. Yeah, about that little fun. That's seven. Seven. And counting the ones under the house. Fifteen altogether. Joe, they're popping out all over the place. Yeah, I know it, and we're fresh out of cages. And them cages are costing money. Hey. Hey, you remember those, those old wire chicken cages that they had in the back of Nate Swanson's stable? Oh, yeah. Hey, if he still got those, buddy, we could save us a bunch of money there. Come on, let's go. I'm sorry, boys, but like I said, old man Bryce bought them cages about, about a month ago. Well... There ain't nothing to do but me and Joe to build some more, that's all. By the way, I uh, ran into Barlow and Clyde this morning. They showed me that contract they got with that outfit in Chicago. Yeah. True they'll take all the rabbit highs they can get? That's right. Me and little Joe figured to put a genuine Gerby Royal on every female in the hey, United... Hey. Yes, little Joe? Is this the horse Pa's been looking at? Sure is. Ben liked him. But thought I was a mite high on the price. Why? Just thinking, Pa's birthday's coming up. That'd make a fine present. You're right, Joe. You sure would at that. 150 is yours. 150. We got most of our money tied up in that rabbit business. Mm -hmm. Settle for something less. Oh, it sure look fine on him, though, Winnie. Yeah. Come on. Now wait a minute, boys. Wait a minute. This uh, this rabbit raisin kind of interests me. Now, if this rabbit thing gets a little too big for you, maybe you'd like a. Silent partner? You want to buy in? In a way. I'll be having my stable here in Virginia City. You could use part of it as a storehouse for your hides. And I could make them cages in my spare time. For a third interest, of course. Uh, take a lot more than that to get a third interest. Now. Well, I, uh, I might add a fine birthday present for you boys to give your pa. Sure. You just got yourself in a rabbit business, Nate. Congratulations, partner. Hey, he's gonna be surprised. Now, come on, don't be so skittish. Little Teddy, a little fellow that 
practically hand-fed for a horse, little Jew. You shouldn't cooperate with her. Mighty fine-looking animal. Happy birthday, Paul. Hey, little Joe, know you've had your eye on old Nate's cutting horse for a long time, so we we bought him for your birthday present. Christmases and one beautiful package. Yeah, and Nate says he's still a little skittish yet. Oh, but he's, he's solid and he's got the good moves. And if it'll work, he'll, he'll be a real good one. Don't know what to say. I... Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll go put him in a corral. Yeah. Oh, he's a fine looking one. I'm glad you like him, Bob. Hope old Hopsing's got some good deed in there. My stomach tells me it's time to be down. It is, eh? Well, you take this little fella and put him away, and I'll talk to Hopsing and get everything ready. Right. Thank you, Hoss. Yes, sir. Mmm, look at that. Mmm, that smells good. Mm. If it's anything like as good as it smells. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Hey, you know, we haven't had stewed chicken in a long time. Hopsing, you sure outdid yourself tonight. Don't taste exactly like, like chicken, does it? Huh. More like, sort of like. Sort of like rabbit, yes? Yeah, like rabbit. <laughs> Pop Singh, huh? How many rabbits did you put in that stew? Three. Fat one, little Joe. Three fat one, little Joe. You know what that is? That's six dollars, Hop Singh. Six dollars worth of gerbies. Mr. Benfica, you say that. He tell me, tell you, give him the bill. Mm hmm Give him the bill. It's not, it's, not the, it's not the three rabbits that are in there. It's what it represents. By the time we finish dinner, those three rabbits could be maybe 24 rabbits. I got enough money now, I'm gonna eat them. Excuse me. Come on. Go ahead and get me a little fresh air. Excellent. You have to do that. Uh, how many more like that one we got? Well, if you're thinking in terms of a fur coat, you can forget it. He's the only one we got with markings like this. Oh, that burnt. You know, we could get two or three times as much money if we had some more like that one. Well, you just forget it. Well, don't get all out of sorts. I'm just trying to be enterprising. You know, I sometimes think you'd skin everything on the Ponderosa if the price was right. Well, if that's your attitude, then just leave me alone. I have a lot of paper. Well, this business doesn't run itself. I gotta figure out profits against overhead and things like that. Little brother, there's changes taking place in you. And they ain't for the better, neither. Uh -huh. Business is business. And your rabbits. 428 rabbits. 428 rabbits. You got about 956 rabbits. <laughs> I ain't never seen nothing double, triple, quadruple. Whatever comes after that, like you little jumpers have. I ain't never seen nothing multiply like this. 
Bad part, is it? I ain't got the heart to skin none of you. But my little brother catches a hold of you. Hark! Hark, you in! Look at all them plump rabbits. Just prime for skin. I say, Hoss. Howdy, boys. I, I'll tell you, fellas, they're uh, they're not really as proud as they look. No, they ain't. Ooh, looky here. Well, I, I think they need at least a, two or three more weeks, anyhow. Well, that's what you've been telling us all the time, Hoss. What's the matter? You got a better offer or something? Don't you try to outsmart us, Mr. Hoss. Well, it ain't that clyde. It's just that I... Well, I just think they, they need a little more time. Them little Joe's feeling too, huh? Well, uh... Well, I... I reckon I know my little brother's feelings. Where's little Joe now? Well, he ain't around, but... Like I said, I, I reckon I know his feelings. We come out here figuring you'd have a batch of skins, Hoss. I guess we took a ride for nothing. Them rabbits look pretty good right now to me, Hoss. Yeah, now look, Mr. Barlow, I'll tell you what, you and Clyde, just, just don't fret none. Let me take care of everything, and, I, and I'll guarantee everything will be all right. Well, you're going to have a batch of skins for us next week, huh? Well, I should be able to. Well, that's we're that's way right. behind schedule. Yeah, I know, Clyde, I know we are. And, and you and Mr. Barlow can count on me. I guarantee you that, that, that we'll, we'll have it all done. Well, everybody. that's what we're figuring on. Yes, sir. There's more ways than one of skinning a, cat, a rabbit. Just get up in here. You were stalling Clyde and Barlow, weren't you? Hmm? Well, Joe, I wouldn't exactly call it stalling. I... Well, what would, you, what would you call it? Stalling. Stalling. Now, listen, you can't put it off any longer. We have some rabbit skinning to do. Joe, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute, Joe. Wait a minute. I, I, I've been thinking this over, and... And, well, and, and well, uh, well, what? Well, what? that burn it. Joe, you think they're big enough? Big enough, boss. Look at this rabbit. Yeah, you Look at this rabbit. What are you raising, a mountain lion or a rabbit? No, are you letting your heart rule your pocketbook? Hmm? Well, Joe, money ain't everything, Dad Burnett. Look, for the last two weeks, Barlow and Clyde have been hounding us. Hounding us for rabbit hides. Now, when we finally got a batch that are big enough for skinning, you go soft as butter. I reckon I have grown sort of fond of them at that. Yeah, I've gotten fond of them. All right. Look, I didn't know when I went and partis with you that you were going to go squeamish on me. But let's not forget that I still have a little say. Half of these rabbits happen to be mine. And I am going to skin my half of the rabbits. Now, if you'll just step aside. No, you ain't. You ain't skinning these rabbits, Joe. Oh, yes, I am. Would you step? You're standing in front. That fat gerby right there behind your head happens to be my gerby. You're standing in front of my gerby. No, you ain't skinning these rabbits. Not today, you ain't, Joseph. You're, ma you're, making, you're making me mad. I don't care. You ain't skinning these rabbits. I'm skinning that gerby. Now, uh, I don't want to have to come through you. I'd, I'd reconsider that, little brother. Well, I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you, my brother. Not fast. Now, that ger there's a that gerby right behind there is my rabbit. I'll cut you to rip ribbons. I won't. I'm gonna have to. I'm telling you, I'm gonna tell him. I'm gonna. I'm gonna that's my gerby, and I'm gonna get to him. One way or the other, brother horse, I'm gonna get into one of these cages. Well, come on, now, let me out of here! I'm, oh, Mike, come on. Let me out of here! Oh, Mike, I'm gonna hurt Oh, I'm gonna hurt you. Come on, now, let me out of here! Nothing to you pull in your horn. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tear you to pieces when I get out of here. Ooh! Settle down. Well, you, look, let me out of here! Sir. Well, uh, he won't let me skin my share of the Gerbys. Is that true, Hoss? Huh? Well, yeah, Dad Bernie Paul, I, I've grown sort of fond of these little fellers, and... Well, uh, but the fact remains that they are half his. That's right. Dad Bernie, legally, they are half his. Yeah, yeah. then let him have his half. And, Hoss, 
Let him out. Thank you, Father. All right. All right. Straighten up. Hardened little criminal. Business is business. And, and that's all there is to Boss. What must be done must be done. Right in our own family. My very own little brother, a fiend. more than his half, I'm gonna... Well, how many have you slain? Speak up, you fiend. I didn't slay any of them. I couldn't do it. I guess I got too fond of them, too. Really? Yeah, they are all looking at me with big eyes, wiggling their ears and all that. Doggone it, Joe. I'm proud of you. There for a while, I didn't think you had a heart. <clears throat> um, gentlemen, uh, the fact remains that uh, the Ponderosa now has umpteen rabbits we can't eat and umpteen rabbits we can't skin. Now, what do you... Enterprising fur dealers intend to do with them. I never thought about that, Paul. Well, I suggest you start thinking about it before those cute little ear wiggling friends of yours take over the Ponderosa. Think. I'm thinking. What are you thinking? Sure. Well, what do you figure, Joe? Hmm? Well, we could turn them loose. No, can't do that. They'd overrun the ranch inside of six months. Suppose we sold them back to Clyde and Barlow alive and let them... Clyde and Barlow. No, couldn't, couldn't think about this little fellow as a fur coat. Gotta do something. Yeah, that's for sure. Paul ain't gonna sit still for long. Your affection for, for the rabbits is, is, is bigger than, than my affection. Well, I'm bigger than you are, Joe. Right, right. You're bigger than I am, and your affection is bigger. Yeah. So I'll give you my share of the rabbits. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's all right. Joe, you son of a gun. That's, that's nice of Hey! <laughs> what? We're in this together. Don't you pull that stuff on me. Oh, it, was just, it was a thought. I uh, had that all figured out just like that, it? yeah. Rabbit eat up hops in garden. Me chop. Me chop. Little oh. Joe, Mr. Horse, me not want rabbit get away. <laughs> Save you two dollar. Abner. You got to get a pretty good price for that old saddle, don't you think? Well, I have to, Ben. You mean you have to? You sound as if you've been had or something. Well, you wound me up awful tight when we was dickering. <laughs> hey, speaking of tight, I think the least you could do is break in this new saddle. 
break it in. Well, I hope that saddle pinches and bites you for a month. <laughs> Happy birthday, Ben. <laughs> ben? Me and Cloud just got in from the Ponderosa, and I'm telling them two boys of you that done gone plum loco. They won't sell us none of them rabbits. We got commitments on them animals. What are you gonna do about it, Ben? Well, boys, I'd surely like to help you, but my hands are tied. Now, ain't this here something? Me and Cloud put them two boys in business, and now they done backed out on us. Well, you know how it is. When you own Gerby Royals, you just hate to part with them. Well, well, it don't make no difference. They're, they're still only rabbits. You sure charge a mighty good price for them being only rabbits. Now, wait a minute, Ben. Me and Clyde ain't gonna take this here laying down. You know yourself that a business deal is a business deal. A business deal is a business deal, and it's your business deal, and it's your problem. So good day and good luck. Clyde, like I said, me and you ain't gonna take this here laying down. Oh, you got built. You have to go faster than that, or we'll never catch up. Hey, here comes our silent partner. Oh, morning, Nate. Morning, boys. <laughs> Boy, you, you really get up early for a city fellow, you know? Sort of. But when you got investments, why, you got to keep a sharp eye open, yeah. don't you, partner? Yeah, that, that, that's right, mate. How are you? Well, I, uh, I reckon you boys won't mind if I... Load up here with a few of these prime rabbits? Well, I, th I think you're right. You're rushing things a little bit, Nate. What do you yeah. mean? Well, I'll tell you, Nate, these, these rabbits, they, uh, they ain't really as prime as they look. No. No. Well, they look fine to me. Well, no, that, that's, that's, that's only because we're, we're keeping them warm in the barn. Yeah, that, uh, that, that, that's, that's right, Nate. Uh, little Joe's right. And I'll tell you something else, too. We, uh, you know, me and little Joe, we've been studying these rabbits, and we, uh, we heard something the other day kind of interesting. We heard that, uh, uh what we hear, Joe? Huh? Oh, what we heard, we heard, oh, what we heard was that, uh, that old, old rabbits, very old, old rabbits, they're, they're the best kind of rabbits. Uh, Nate, uh, little Joe's right. If you, if you sell young coats, all, all, all the hair falls out. Really give you a black eye in a business. I, I mean, really, it'd, it'd be terrible. That's right, that'd be horrible. Not half as terrible and horrible as if a certain party comes up minus a birthday present. What do you mean by that, Nate? I heard a distant rumor that you boys have been making pets out of all these hippity hops. <laughs> oh, that's oh, now, silly, now, now, wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute. nothing. Your silent partner's just about ready to become unsilenced and start yelping good and loud. Now, Nate, you're jumping to conclusions. Well, could be, but... I don't know, my investments look all right to me. Well, they, uh, they look good, Nate, and, and all, but, but they need a little aging. All right, I'll give you one week. Nate, you're being sort of short-sighted. And one week only because, well, Ben and I have been but, friends since we were... Nate, no butts at all! And if I find out I've been flim-flammed... Friendship ceases. And that birthday present of Ben's comes back to the stable, you understand? Get out! We gotta do something. We, we gotta float alone or something and get out of our partnership with that fiend. There's one thing wrong with this whole situation, little brother. And what's that? Well, our friend, the fiend there, Nate, is right. Business is business. Oh, yeah, but the rabbits, we can't, we can't see. Hey, here comes Paul. Well, he sure looks smooth-gated, Pa. Yeah, pleasure to sit. You can always count on getting a good-spirited animal from old Nate, can't you? Hey, that saddle looks fine on you. Yeah, almost broke in. Get rid of those long hair. Those are long, 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 long hair. Long hair. Rodents. Oh. Get rid of them. Oh. And go get my horse before you run from here back to Virginia City. Do you hear me? Yes, sir. Hurry up now. On the double. Get. Miss Dinner. Must be chasing new horse long way. Yeah, they'll hang tough after that horse. 
Empty belly sometimes good lesson for soft heart. <laughs> yeah. If they miss a meal or two, it might even sharpen their business senses up, see? Good night, Mr. Carlyle. Good night. These red slaving ravs have been heavy too easy, Clyde. We gotta put a lot more in the crates, boss. We're gonna run out of crates. Not so loud. I still got some rock salt in my bottom from when I was stealing chickens when I was a kid. You getting more like an old lady all the time. They already done gone to bed. Now come on, get in. Let's get these rabbits out of here. You don't have to talk so loud. Well, I gotta get these rabbits out of here. You talk too much. Howdy. Oh, howdy, Ben. I, I know what you're thinking, but you know us, Ben. We ain't just common thieves. That's right, Ben. You caught me and Clyde, but, but me and Clyde got a contract to fill, and then we got to... How'd you like it? If I helped you fill that contract. What do you mean? What I mean is that these rabbits have to go. Oh, you mean they're getting to be past empty? Yeah, in a manner of speaking. My sons are doing too good a job raising these rabbits. So I'm taking over before these rabbits take over. Meaning you'll sell? If the price is right. Well, me and Clyde are receptive. Now, let me get this uh, straight, see if I'm right. You're to pay $2 for each rabbit. Is that right? That's right. Cured and skinned. Skinned and cured. Well, since uh, I aim to deliver these rabbits to you at, uh, sort of half done, so to speak, I think a dollar and a half would be fair. Oh, no, Ben. A dollar and a quarter is more with the line they're going, market. Dollar and a half. Barlow, I'll, I'll shave my take of Mike just to meet his dollar and a half. Ben, you sure are snug with a dollar. But seeing as how you got me and Clyde cornered here, I'll give you $100 for the whole shebang. $100? Well, there's more than 200 rabbits here. $130. $150. $150? Cash. That sure is hard money. But Ben, if you'd kind of give us a little hand here and help us loading, it sure would ease the pain. Don't you howdy me, Ben Cartwright. Nate, you sound a little out of sorts. It's trouble. Trouble? Those sons of yours are trying to skin me out of my third interest in the rabbit raisin. That's the trouble. Makes sense, Nate. Luckily, I ran into Barlow and Clyde, and they told me about the tender-hearted Cartwright boys. Tender-hearted Cartwright. What are you talking about? I made a deal with Hoss and Little Joe for one-third interest in their rabbit raisin. For the use of my stable and... and, uh, that birthday present they give you. Well, that, uh, that, uh, sure puts a new light on things, doesn't it? It sure does. Now, if that little horse is in good health, I'll just take him back and charge a... a day's rental. Fair enough, Ben. He's in the stable, isn't he? Uh, uh, Nate, uh... Nate, you, uh, you told me you'd sell me that black for $150. That was my price. Uh, well, I guess it's a deal, then. You, uh, you got time for a cup of coffee? Obliged, Ben, but I got the missus watching the stable while I'm away. And her, her hay fever, oh, it kicks up something awful if she has to stay there too long. Well, I sort of caused you all the trouble, Nate. Oh, I reckon there was no harm done. Bye, Ben. Bye, Nate. Come on.
down to scratch on him. We saved him for you, Paul. Ain't even got a scratch on it, Paul. Where's the rest of the saddle? Well, you 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 were right about one thing. That that horse is quick as a cat. Well, yeah. You know you know horse. Where is sure the rest of the saddle? You know, Paul, there's, uh, there's just a whole bunch of low-hanging limbs all over the Ponderosa. Oh, and, the br and the brush. You remember the brush? Oh, oh hell. You couldn't, you couldn't cut, cut it through it with oh, an axe. Rocks oh. and boulders. And... I had that saddle for three days. You know, Paul, that, that horse tried to go through places that a, that a worm couldn't get through. I had that saddle almost broken in. But the, the, the bridle, the bridle's in good, good shape. Yeah, take a look at that bridle. That saddle cost me one hundred dollars. Hey, well, you, you, you know, you know, as as handy as horse is, Pa, he 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 could take all these pieces and then and just whip you up a new saddle. Just you boys rub down that horse real good. See you two in the house. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What do you think? Well, I think we just got stuck for the price of a new saddle. That's what I think. Are you sure you couldn't take these and kind of hook them? To hook them? Well, see boys find way home. Yes, they found their way home. Hopsing, think ahead. Already got half a pantry cooking on stove. Well, by the time we get through with those boys, they may not have an appetite left to eat with. Oh, no matter what happened, Mr. Horse got fine big belly to fill. <laughs> sure has. Oh, we've been robbed! Robbed! Some dirty rustler! Oh, we've been robbed! Well, they're gone. They're all gone. All our Gerby royals are gone. Been rustled. The gir there's not a Gerby in a barn. The cages are gone. Everything's gone. I know. You know? I sold them. So, you sold them? For cash. To Barlow and Clyde. Oh, Paul. To Barlow and Clyde. Yeah, I had to sell them at a sacrifice, but I figure $150 is better than nothing. The babies. You sold the babies and everything? Babies and everything. Oh, how could you? How could you sell them to, to them butchers? Well, I'll tell you why, Hoss. I figured I had to get rid of them, but I also sold them an idea. I convinced them that they could make an even bigger profit off those rabbits if they sold them at Easter time as pets. As pets? Yeah. You mean alive? Well, of course alive. <laughs> hey, that's a good idea. Alive. Hey, then they're all right. Of course. They're all right. Yeah. The rabbits are all right. We, we made $150. $150. Yeah. <laughs> uh, not quite. You see, I figured that your rabbits were really responsible for ruining my brand new $100 saddle. Now, you're not going to mind paying for it, will you? Fifty bucks. We're profit profit. Fifty dollars, right? Fifty dollars, we'll take it. Uh, not quite. <laughs> See, uh, Nate Swenson was here a little while ago. Does that ring a bell? Nate Swenson? I gave him the fifty dollars for the horse. Wow. So we broke even. The rabbits are all right, and we broke even. We couldn't ask. Uh, not quite. 
See, the horse is really $150. I gave him your 50, and I had to add another $100 out of my own money for my birthday present. Well, you, you, know, you know what they always say. Yeah. What do they always say? Well, they, uh, they, oh, they always, they always say it, it's better to, to give than to receive. Yeah. <laughs> You've heard them say that. Well, I'm glad you think of it that way, boys. Because now I know you're going to be very happy about giving me your next three months' wages. Huh. My birthday present. Oh. Happy yes. birthday. Yes. Happy birthday. <laughs> Joe, what do you think you're doing? Oh, I was just going to try Pa's horse in a minute. Joseph, that's a brand new saddle, $100. Well, I know it's a brand new saddle, $100. I'm going to break it in a little bit for Pa. Don't you worry, brother. Don't you worry. Where'd he go? I'll give you one big jump and guess which way. Oh, no. Daddy, Daddy! 